Welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be looking at installing the Octoprint on our Prusa Mark III with a Raspberry Pi. Now the Octoprint is a great tool that allows you to control and monitor your prints remotely while doing cool time-lapse videos plus many other things. Now the Prusa Mark III S does have a cutout that allows you to insert a Raspberry Pi Zero. However, many found that it probably underwhelming and probably underpowered while using it in conjunction with a camera. Now even Octoprint suggests voiding using Raspberry Pi Zero, but I love making videos and having a Raspberry Pi with power is a definite must. Now for today's video, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4B. Now I can also use a Raspberry Pi 3 for this installation. Now for today's demonstration, I'm gonna immediately install a Raspberry Pi with the Prusa MT controller unit while drawing power from the power supply unit. Now the Raspberry Pi 4B does draw more power than the NC controller board allows, so it's recommended that you install a buck converter and draw your power from the power supply unit. Now for this may sound technical, but I'm gonna break this down very easily so that you can easily follow along, and all the supplies that you need will be listed below. Now just showing a comparison, this is what I'm gonna be installing. So here we have the Raspberry Pi, the buck converter right below, and we're going to be putting the NC controller board right in here and on this all in one unit. So just fair comparison, this is the NC controller unit that's in that came along with the Prusa Mark 3S, and this is what we're going to be installing to replace this to fit everything in nice and sound. So all the supplies that you need will be listed as followed. So right, the first thing you need is your Raspberry Pi with your Octoprint loaded on your micro SD card. The second thing you need is your wires that connect your Raspberry Pi to your NT board and you also your buck converter to attach to your power supply unit. Now if you don't have time to assemble one of these things you can find it in the link below where I'll have it available for sale, make it easy on you. For this, I'm using three screws for the Raspberry Pi, three screws for the buck converter, and four screws and nuts for the cover of your control units. Now, I'll list most the specification of all the nuts below, but in general sense, you can get away with using your M3 by 10 nuts. Now, the first thing for this installation, you basically have to remove your NC controller unit from your Prusa Mark 3S. Now, if you don't remember how to uninstall it, refer to the online manual. They have great details on how to locate those four screws that attaches the engine control unit to the frame of your Prusa Mark 3S. So the first thing you want to do is take your M3 nuts and install them. This is for the cover of your control unit. And you want to search the screws right here, here, here and here. Next thing you want to do is install your M3 nuts for your NC control units here, 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 and here. And lastly, you want to take your two square nuts and install them along this power management hole area as such. Now that you have all your nuts installed, it's time to inst install this case onto your Prusa printer.
Now head over to your printer setting and go to RPI and enable that setting. This will allow your printer to use the GPIO ports to communicate with the Raspberry Pi. Next thing you want to do is head over to Octoprint's website and read the recommendation in terms of hardware, what you need for you to use Octoprint. And then scroll down to where you can download the latest version of Octopi. For me, it's 0.17.0. Now, once you're finished downloading the zip file, you need a software to flash that file onto your SD card. Now, if you scroll further down, you'll see a link to using Etcher. That's probably the quick and easiest way to flash your SD card. Just basically unzip the file, load your file, and it'll automatically zip flash your SD card for you. Once Octoprint is completely flashed your SD card, reinstall it to your computer, you might get some warnings to reformat it, ignore it, then head over to your SD card and open this file and scroll down to all the way where it says WPA, WPA2, secure. Here you want to hit enter your network ID and password. First remove all the hashtag and then type in your Wi-Fi ID and password exactly as is. For the next part, you need to download a secure shell terminal like PuTTY and type in your IP address. Once you log in, type in your login, which is Pi, and your password is Raspberry. For the next part, you need to type in this command in the terminal, sudo nano boot config.txt and then type in your password for your Raspberry. Once you're in the text file, scroll all the way down to the bottom and we're going to enter a new command into this text file. Now here you want to do is enter this command that's enable underscore UART equal one and the line following it. And then once you fi finish typing it in, control X to exit and save. So the next thing you want to do is type in this command, sudo raspi hyphen config, and then hit enter. Once you're into this interface, scroll down to number three, interface control, then hit number P6 for serial port. Would you like the login shell? Hit no. Would you like the serial hardware enable? Hit yes. Next thing you want to do is type in octopi.local in your web browser. Now I already have mine set up, so set up your user account for if this is your first time. Next thing you want to do is go into your Octoprint settings and go into your serial connection. Now I have mine already set up, but you want the first thing you want to do is set your bond rate to 11.52.00. Once you have that set, go down to the next section says additional serial ports and you want to type that command that you see right there as is once you have that command typed in you can go up to your first selection the serial port and it'll allow you to select that as your default option for your serial ports now that you have everything set you should be able to connect to your 3d printer instantly now this gives you information about the temperature of your nozzle, temperature of your bed, images from your camera if you have one installed, terminal information, and ability to do time lapses. Now there's also additional plugins you can install, that's up to your discretion. And there's also the ability to remotely control and view the information from your printer from your phone. But that gets a little bit more tactical than I want, so I'll just leave that as is. So all right, before we wrap this up, let's take a final look at our printer. So here we have our all-in-one case that has our NC Rambo board, our Raspberry Pi 4B, and our Bucky converter. Now being having everything inside one case, does it get hot? From my temperature readings from pointing my IR gun at the back of the uh, Raspberry Pi 4B, it hovered exactly around 100 degrees at max. So I did use it printing out more than a couple of prints since I had it all set up and I had never had any failure and the temperature never spiked in dangerous levels. So I believe you can get away without using the fan, 
But if you feel the need to use a fan, then please feel free to print out a cover with a fan case. So I did make some changes since you see my earlier videos. So instead of having the camera, uh, the cable for the camera coming out from the side, I have it coming from down from below. And then you can see here, nice cable management along the side. And I love to have, have this set up with the camera pointing directly in front. So I'm sure there's other better um, setups for the camera, but I, this works just fine for me. So all right, that's all I have for today. If you found the video interesting and informative, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos from me, hit the subscribe buttons. If you have any thoughts, comments, or suggestions, leave in the section below. I'd love to hear back from you guys. Until next time, happy printing.